You know, um, God has a dream about church, and this is not it. <laughs> this is not what the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit talked about before the dawn of time. This is not it. I find so many things remarkable about God, utterly astonishing, in fact. <clears throat> One of them is that Scripture says that Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Before God said, let there be, they'd already worked it out. Now that's intentionality right there. They already worked it out. Mankind would fall, would need to be redeemed. Jesus had already said, I'll do it. Thing is that one of the things that there has been one unyielding purpose in the Father's heart all these ages past. One single purpose in his mind <clears throat> that he has held true to despite everything that humanity has done. Despite everything, one purpose and one purpose only behind everything that he's done. And that was to provide an eternal companion for his son. This has always been about romance. From the first day until the last, it has been to provide a bride for his son. See, when you understand the depth of that intentionality, you have got to come to understand the depth of God's passion for you. <clears throat> when Jesus came into the earth, He wasn't God pretending to be a man. He was a man living in right relationship with God. He was a man who observed His Father and only did what His Father was doing. <clears throat> only said what his father was saying. And he came to talk about heaven. He came to brag on his father and talk about the Holy Spirit. And he came to destroy the works of the devil. And he came to restore joy and glory and goodness and kindness to the earth. He came to bring heaven to earth. That's his passion on earth as it is in heaven. Nothing more and definitely nothing less. And he came to a people group who'd lost sight of his glory, who'd in the end had <clears throat> brought everything down to just a set of rules in which they oppressed people. Does that sound familiar to you? Brought it down to just a religious community that bore no relation to what heaven is really like. And he came to his own, and his own couldn't receive him because he was so radically different. I have a question here. If Jesus came to America, could he be a Christian? I don't think so. He certainly, he would not want to be a charismatic, and neither would he want to be an evangelical. I don't think Jesus could be a Christian in this church environment. He would have to come to us and say these words, you have heard it said, but now I say to you. He would have to come to us and say, beloved, I love you, but this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. It's not anywhere close to it. It's like it is in one country and you are in another. 
This is not it. And this is not what I died for. I died to restore heaven to earth. I died to restore the kingdom and glory and majesty and sovereignty. I didn't die so that you could be a conservative and hide behind your walls. I didn't die for that. I died to make you outrageous. God does not have a conservative bone in His body. Read the book. It talks about someone outrageous. Every page, every chapter, <clears throat> there's something radical, different. What are conservatives trying to conserve exactly? We are but a pale shadow of the glory of God. All of this is changing now. All of this is changing. And the Father is coming back to the house that should belong to Him and yet doesn't. And He's coming back and He's saying to us, you need to prepare the way of the Lord. I'm not the Lord that you think I am, the Lord that I really am. Father has a dream about church. It's a dream where sickness cannot live. I am completely nonplussed by the statement, we are a Bible-believing church, and yet they have no power. I don't understand that. That doesn't compute. How can you be Bible-believing and yet have a theology of powerlessness? That does not make sense to anybody. No wonder we're a laughingstock in the earth. Father has a dream on earth as it is in heaven. He has a dream of millions upon millions upon millions of people set free to know Him. He has a dream about churches being vibrant communities full of worship, full of power, full of outrageous things going on, full of laughter and love. He has a dream where people come together in order to have encounters together with Him. He has a dream where His Word is written on people's hearts, not memorized in their head. He has a dream about church, that it's powerful, that it's beautiful, that it's dreadful to the enemy. He has a dream and a passion about a bunch of people in the earth so radically affected by Him that they are totally vulnerable and susceptible to heaven. He has a dream. He has a dream about a community of people in the earth that are just like Him, unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. He has a dream. The people who are living in Ephesians 3.20 that God, my God can do all things. Abundantly above and beyond all that we can ask or think. My question is, what's beyond thinking? No, seriously. If God is doing abundantly beyond what we can ask or think, what's beyond thinking? Surely that will be dreaming. Do you know why God gave you an imagination? Because mentally, intellectually, you cannot contain everything, that, all the knowledge there is to know about God. There are some things about God, some revelations about God you can only access through dreaming. That's why He gives people visions and dreams, because it's a way of expanding things beyond their logic. 
<clears throat> God is not logical. He's intuitive. He's not reasonable. He's creative. And he's much too clever to be an intellectual. He's full of wisdom. And he's beautiful. And he's incredible. And in order to represent him, you have to be beautiful and incredible. That's how it works. As he is, so are we in this world. So we are living in days then when God is taking our is, is taking us from our current level of mediocrity up to our rightful level where the world looks at us with astonishment because that's the way they looked at Jesus. And remember, Jesus was a man in right relationship with God. He was a man modeling, this is what you can do. All of these things I'm doing, you can do, and so much more besides, because he was a man in right relationship with God. <clears throat> these are days when we are being restored to our rightful place. And it is a place so far above where we are. We're going to need a space rocket to get there. I kind of think God's got something in mind, hey? Seriously, beloved, we are so far behind our own development, it's embarrassing. That's why there is a divine acceleration in the earth. That's why there is a quickening spirit abroad in the earth right now. <clears throat> God is accelerating our development because we are playing catch-up. We are. That is the name of the game right now. We're playing catch up with all that God wants us to be. We've got to catch up to the real anointing. And we have to stop messing around in the shallows and get out into the deep things of God. And in order for that to happen, God needs and requires a company of people who are going to go off the deep end. <clears throat> he needs a company of people that He can use as a visual aid to the earth. He's looking for a prototype. I believe God is building prototype churches all over the world right now. That is people who will not, no longer be satisfied by business as usual who are after something more. There are millions of people leaving the church in North America. They're not leaving it because they've lost their faith. They're leaving it because they want to find it. <clears throat> God has no allegiance whatsoever to a religious system. And we're discovering that in these days. These are going to be some extraordinary days the like of which America has never seen in her church experience. These are extraordinary days. <clears throat> so it's with that backdrop in mind that I feel the Lord, uh, the second part of my assignment this weekend is to prophesy what I feel the Lord is saying to a glow in these times. So that's... That's the backdrop. And I want to start um, maybe just a little further back, something that I sense has been happening for the past couple of years. <clears throat> In recent years, the Holy Spirit has been, and I believe still is, brooding over this movement. And there is a new move of the Spirit been coming into a glow steadily for the past few years, certainly since I was last with you guys in Phoenix. 
when you could see there was an acceleration upon you and a continuous move of the Spirit in your midst. And whenever God begins to do something new, chaos comes to the order that we are familiar with. Now, we like to quote those verses, you know, everything must be done decently and in order. My question always is, whose order are we talking about here? Yeah? And so when God begins to do something new and bring in something new, there is a necessary season of chaos. Chaos is like there's a clutter, there's a a disarray, there's a muddle. It feels like something's happening, but it's not happening. And you're in this place where you don't like where you are, and you're not sure about where you're going. And when God starts to talk about it, you want to go back. It's that kind of thing. It makes you nervous. It makes you edgy. You feel out of sorts a little bit. Chaos comes to us because God is changing the order by which we know Him and by which we function with Him in gifting. And there comes a point where the old way of doing things is going into the ground, but the new thing is barely visible. Yeah? And so God messes with our vision. I was talking to a bunch of guys the other month, and they were saying, we really want you to come and help us, you know, with a 20-year vision. And I started laughing. I said, dude, there ain't no such thing. You'd be lucky if you get six months out of God. (laughs) God is not giving us vision right now. He's giving us Himself. And we have to come. The, The whole thing is God will not give vision to the functionality of your ministry. He gives vision to your relationship with Him. Yeah? So when God messes with your vision, it's because He wants to give you Himself. And so the best way to get into a deeper place of vision is to come and spend time in worship. And every movement goes through a season where worship is on God's agenda. And if anything else is on your agenda, well, you're just going to flat out miss God. Because He will not commit you to a new level of anointing and gifting and ministry unless you've gone to a new level of anointing in your relationship. Because if you go to a new level of anointing and gifting and ministry and your relationship and your rest and your peace in God has not been upgraded, you're going to get killed out there. God is brooding over you. We see it in creation. Genesis 1, the Spirit brooding over what God is creating. And it says for a necessary time, a part of that brooding is that everything is without form and void. You lose your shape. Your vision somehow just seems to be oppressive to you. The Hebrew phrase for that is tohu bohu. (laughs) Without form and void. Tohu bohu. I've had many tohu bohu times in my life when God has been wanting to take me to a whole different level. And, um, <clears throat> and I'm out there enjoying myself in the ministry, and then suddenly, you know, I can't even spell anointing, let alone have one. <laughs> and for a while, it's like, I don't even know which side is up. It's tohu bohu. Nothing seems to work. You spend two hours trying to get a breakthrough that a month ago you could have got in 10 minutes. The axe is dull. Tohu bohu. I am without form and void. (laughs) And I think my name is Graham, but I can't even spell that as well. The biggest danger to a new move of God is the old one that's still working. And sometimes the old that has served us so well is now void, but the new has not yet taken shape. So we can't recognize it. Beloved, this is the time of dreaming. When that's happening, God is saying, just dream for a while with me. You know, if you can lay aside, if you can come and say, Lord, we just make an offering to you 
of our vision and our ministry, we lay it at your feet. What he will do is he will say, okay, you pursue me over here in, in, in build up your relationship, come into a new place of intimacy, <clears throat> and we'll still go out and do all the stuff, and I'll bless you and I'll increase you, but you won't have to do anything. I'll just show up. You concentrate on this, and I'll help you with that. But if we concentrate on that at the expense of this, he will resist us. I've learned this. <laughs> Comes a time when you have to lay down all that you do. Mary, Martha has to lay everything down because we need to be Mary's for a while. But we still do the Martha thing, and it gets done. We don't know how it gets done. And that's when the Father says to you, don't pray about the ministry. Just do it, and I'll be with you. And there have been times when the Father has rebuked me and said, Greg, are you praying about the ministry? What did I say, son? You pray about me and you. You seek me and you. You come to a new place of worship. I don't want you to talk to me about the ministry, but when you go out there, I will bless you. And I have actually gone into times of increase in the ministry, but I've not even been concerned about it. It's a strange time. That's a kind of tohu bohu all by itself. <laughs> yeah. Because we're so used to, Lord, we just pray for breakthrough. No, I don't pray for breakthrough. Pray for a breakthrough for yourself. I'll get the breakthrough over here. It's a brilliant thing. I think we're in that place right now. I believe the Father's saying to you, don't pray about the ministry right now. Pray about what's happening between you and me. Yeah. It's the time for you and me to come into a deeper place of relationship and fellowship. I want you to see something new about me. I want you to catch hold of me in a fresh way. Yeah, I'll take care of all the Martha stuff. You come and be a Mary right now. That's what I want. Choose the good thing. This is a time of desire and conception. New ideas, fresh vision, a yearning for something more about who Jesus is. A yearning for something more in terms of the ministry. We know <clears throat> right now there is a level coming to us here in a glow that will make everything we've done seem like Sunday school. No disrespect intended. But I think the, the, the jump, the leap, the step, the level that God is putting in front of us is as high as anything we've ever done. If you take all the 40 years of a glow, I think we're at a critical point in our history when God is saying, That's, those are the sum total of all the, the height you've made. But in this next single step, you're going to do this. You're going to go to a level unprecedented in your thinking and your planning. <clears throat> it's hard to talk about it's difficult to express. It's tohu bohu. We're going to be losing our grip on the functionality of ministry, and yet everything will work just as fine. And yet, we're going to go into a deeper place of relationship with the Father. <clears throat> what does that mean? I think we're going to be doing ministry on autopilot for a while. Even having an increase of anointing. The Spirit is brooding over you. And He's creating something new. How many of you in recent times have felt a sadness, <clears throat> an air of despondency, even a boredom in terms of what you're doing? It's like, I'm going through the motions, but I don't quite know what else to do. I know there's something more, but you know, I, I just, you're just doing what you know, but you know this is not it any longer. Yeah? Welcome to Tohu Bohu. <laughs> Some of you have even considered your place in the movement. Is this where I should be? Huh? Well, it's just you're in a place of Tohu Bohu, nothing makes sense. But thanks for waiting. 
Yeah? Thanks for not moving. The Holy Spirit is brooding over you, stirring up your depths. It's not the enemy that's at work, even though he is trying to capitalize on it to bring confusion. But it's not him. He'd love to take the credit, but you know he's a liar anyway. <clears throat> How many of you have been gone into warfare about this thing and not seen a breakthrough? That's because a breakthrough is not required through battle. God's giving you a new life. Girl, you're pregnant. <laughs> something new life is forming. You're carrying something new in the Spirit. <clears throat> something I believe that has never been seen in the world of the church. Something that has not ever been felt in this magnitude in the kingdom. What we read in the Bible was just a starter kit. You should not look at the book of Acts and say, let's get back there. We're not going back to anything. That's why there's absolutely no point in studying the history of past revivals, because God ain't going to do it that way anyway. He's doing something new. Jesus said, greater things than these shall you do. What does that mean? We're going to be doing things that are not in the Bible. So... We're going to be doing things that's not in the Gospels. Because he said greater things than this. Kind of makes Bible believing a lot more interesting. <laughs> there are many new forms of life going to be birthed in the Spirit in these days. This next time, this next season. And I believe the anointing and the vision of a glow is about to change forever. New forms of ministry and mission, new times of ministry, new types of missionaries, a different and more radical leadership. It's not a criticism, it's an observation of where these guys are going. A new order will be established. You're pregnant with permission. New dreams are forming, new life taking shape, and you have this growing season ahead of you, a time set aside <clears throat> where you can do business as usual with the Lord and even go to new heights of power and authority, but all the time you're still preparing for something new. It's like you're in this season of overlap where you're moving into something new at the same time, what you've been doing is going to a new height. Don't get suckered in by that, though. Don't think that because you've got a new increase of anointing and authority in what you have been doing, that that's the new move. It isn't. The new move is relationship first. You're going to a deeper level of relationship with God. You're going to have your eyes open to see who He really is. And almost like Moses, you're going to get a vision of something about God that totally wrecks your world. Every one of us in this room is going to see God differently. And we're going to fall more in love with Him as a result of that. And you're going to see something about an aspect of God's personality for you that will set you up for years to come. It will give you, bring you into a brand new experience of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. <clears throat> These are extraordinary days where everything that you've seen in church, everything you know about God in church, it has not prepared you for what God is about to do. And so the old mandate is disappearing. But it's going to end in high honor and achievement because God gave the mandates you've been working to. And when they end, they're going to end in a place of honor and achievement. Then they're going to be replaced by something absolutely, truly magnificent, the stuff of dreams. 
It's important for you to feel the weight of something deeper and more powerful. <clears throat> I believe many thousands of aglow people have, around the earth have been moved into a place of dreaming and desire. On days you just catch yourself thinking outside of your own box, wondering, what about this? What about that? Where are we going? What's happening? I want more than this. <clears throat> there is, I believe, the spirit and the power of Elijah will be seen in this movement in a huge way. This is what I sense in the spirit around the earth. It's what I sense in you guys because you're a prototype company that God is releasing. You are His visual aid of what's coming next. You're pioneers, so you're going to be criticized like you've never been criticized before. Pioneers are always criticized by settlers. <clears throat> This is what I sense in the Spirit. Ancient levels of power are opening up in a new way, and they're opening up to you. you know, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Jesus appeared with Moses and Elijah, He was opening up the ancient pathways of men and God in a new way. And it's happening now again today, and it's happening in this movement. It's like the Deliverer and the Restorer are moving with the Redeemer in your midst. This is your inheritance. 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 Is your inheritance. And so there's a shift going on right now where you're moving away from God meeting your needs. You're moving into a place of provision unprecedented in your history. <clears throat> you have a new persona as a company. And a word, I believe, has been spoken over a glow from heaven. And the church must hear it. It's a kingdom word, and it can only be heard, understood, and acted upon by apostolic personnel, people who really understand the nature of the kingdom and what the kingdom is. See, there are church people and there are kingdom people. And there are churches that are kingdom communities, and there are churches that can't even spell kingdom. And this is the word I believe that God is releasing over you. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to Him. What I sense in the glow is the Son and the Bride merging together. And that creates a whole different dynamic. You know, this is not an arranged marriage. Jesus is walking the earth. He's courting us. We're not the bride of Christ yet, so that means we're all the girlfriend of God. So turn to your neighbor and say, hello, girlfriend. <laughs> it's really interesting when you see that happen. All the girls go, hello, girlfriend. And all the guys go, dude. <laughs> What I sense is this, a new beloved is emerging. Now, relationships change you. Passionate love changes you. It changes who you are. You become different with that person than you were before. And in our relationship with God, we become different as He courts us, as His passion takes hold of us. We continue becoming different people. And so it's like each time a new beloved is emerging. And what I say, what I see about a glow is a new beloved corporately is emerging. We're going to get a new sneak preview of the bride of Christ. 
and who she's becoming next. And with this new beloved comes a power beyond imagining. We have not even scratched the surface of the resources of heaven in terms of power for miracles, signs, and wonders. We're still dabbling around in the shallows. God is looking for a pilot group, a pioneering community. And He's saying, come up higher. Come up higher. There's something more I want you to see and feel and experience. An ancient pathway is opening up in your midst. An authority to deliver, to restore, and to create new life. Heaven has opened to you. Listen, I am not here to say heaven will open to you at some point. I'm not here to talk about possibilities. I'm here to say it's a done deal. I don't know what happened, but in my spirit, it felt like somewhere back a few months ago, something happened, and you don't quite know what it is. That was a window opening in heaven. I'm here to say that window is open over a glow. And so now your prayers must change. Now your praying must change. Now your posture needs to adjust because a window has been opening. We get so used to asking God for things. And you guys are so committed and persevering and faithful to pray that sometimes the most faithful, persevering people are the last ones to recognize that their prayer has been answered. I'm the Balaam's ass that's here this weekend (laughs) to say to you, A window has opened over this movement. It's not opening. It is fully open. It's a certainty. It's a done deal. It's open. You have an open heaven. 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 This is your inheritance. This is your inheritance. And also, it's the kiss of the Lord. It's the thank you of the Father. It's the embrace of the Spirit. A glow has come of age. Past your tests. The Lord trusts you. The Lord trusts you. The Lord trusts you. You have come of age. And now he says, This to the earth, this is my beloved. Listen. I am well pleased. Listen. You have a voice in the earth bigger than you can possibly imagine. And it's going to grow and grow and grow and grow. There's a fresh wind blowing in this movement. A glow has grown up and can be trusted with the deep things of heaven. So, a new spirituality is forming within this movement. New perceptions of the kingdom a wisdom from heaven. It's time to trade in what you know for what God knows. Truths and experiences that you have loved will now seem old. You're not abandoning them. What will happen is you're seeing them go to their rightful level. We have a truth about the Redeemer that is earthbound. Fabulous, amazing, but it's earthbound. But when you connect in heaven and you see their truth about the Redeemer, it shakes your world. That's what I mean. Truths that we have experienced 
when we see it from heaven's perspective, we'll think, oh my good God, all of that is in that. I never saw all of that. I just saw that. Because we're so fond of putting God in a box, eh? The only time he put himself in a box, he said, you touch this thing and I'll kill you. <clears throat> it's the same experience that Israel had when Messiah was present. The old truth that had sustained them for centuries was swept away by Christ. And he became the embodiment of a new way, a higher truth, a radiant life. This is that. This is the same as that. It's the same experience as that. We're going to get caught up in Christ in ways that will astonish us. We're going to be amazed and confounded by the glory and the majesty of God. We're going to see a rad we're going to have a radiant idea of God and a radiant idea of the kingdom and a radiant idea of church and a radiant idea of yourself. That's so important. You cannot gaze on glory without being transfigured by it without you becoming glorious. You're part of the glory of God. He's not going to share it with you in one sense, but you're just going to get caught up in the glow of everything He's doing and everything that He is. <clears throat> I tell you, you're going to come into some anointings so powerful, so amazing, so astonishing. It will seem to you in a time to come that when you look back on all your years of training, it will seem like you were using broken keys and low revelation compared to what God is about to give you. There is an open heaven over a glow, and your inheritance is forming even as we speak. <clears throat> Trade in what you know for what the Father knows. And you will hear the voice of the bridegroom saying to you, his beloved, you have heard it said, but now I say to you. When Jesus came, he brought heaven with him. The son and the bride are coming together. It's a glorious paradox. But there is a dance and a courtship taking place in the earth. And a glow will bear the splendor of it. You'll be a visual aid about what's happening. There is so much we don't know in the mind and heart of God right now. He's looking for a people group to deposit revelation that will shake the earth and cause Him to come down. There is an open heaven now over a glow. And the ancient, the ancient paths are opening up to you. A new level has been bestowed upon you. Ancient anointings are being released again. The warrior spirit of Moses and Joshua and Caleb is rising up in the midst. The spirit of worship and royalty on David is being released again into the earth. The wisdom of Daniel is going to come back. The anointing of Esther, the ancient voices of the prophets, the revelations of Paul, all being restored, ancient paths being restored. And we're going to see the return of the modern day equivalent of David's mighty men, champions and warriors, people of substance in the Spirit. <clears throat> the splendor of heaven is being revealed again throughout the earth. The radiance of heaven is returning. And with it, a lifestyle so supernatural and so astonishing, it will redefine our language and our experience. Beyond anything we can conceive mentally, beyond thinking, heaven will restore us to dreaming and to dreaming out loud. And we shall say, just like ancient Israel, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. In fact, look to Israel. 
in the coming years. And you will see the spirit of Abraham restored to the land. And the ancient prophecies and promises over that nation will come to pass again, and they will confound the world. And we should go there and call it up. Call up those words. Speak to Israel. You are the father of nations. Call it up. In you, all the earth will be blessed. Call it up. Because there is an anointing and a power going to come out of Israel in these times that will astonish the earth. And a glow shall have a new radiance and a new name from heaven. And I keep hearing over a glow a lover's kiss from the throne. I don't know what that means. I just know it's something of intimacy that is incredibly powerful and life-changing. But I do know that a scepter is being held out. Favor is being bestowed that will cause nations to rise. A movement re-equipped and revitalized. And what I see in my spirit when I think of a glow is I see a fountain has been placed in your midst. And you are going to place fountains in every nation on earth. A fresh outpouring of the Spirit. An ancient well being opened. Even going into dry, arid places that used to be uh, like gardens. And God will lead you to water sources and you will, like dig, you will cause wells actually to be dug physically. And water will appear in the earth where none has appeared for many centuries. Strange things happening because heaven is coming back into the earth. And when heaven comes, all the possibilities in the Father's heart come with it. All the impossibilities suddenly become possible. Signs and wonders and miracles. Miracles, thousands of different types of miracles and signs and wonders. Most of them straight out of the stuff of dreams. They're not logical. They're not rational. They're not reasonable. They're spiritual. They're supernatural. And they exist in your heart, not your head. And they exist as a dream in the heart of God. He loves doing the impossible. I tell you, the water level is rising. The water level is rising. The water level is rising. Old wells in nations are being reopened. There is fresh permission on you not just to prophesy, but actually to see the prophecies of old fulfilled to stand in the waste places and command the ancient words to be reborn. And you will go into places and you will say, just as Peter said on the day of Pentecost, this is that which was spoken. And I see like a team of people, researchers, who were researching the nations and what has been spoken over those nations in times past and bringing it back and then going into those places and declaring, this is that. This word, this ancient promise shall be fulfilled in this day and in this time. And what I see is that as heaven opens, your war chest will get bigger. And the Lord will release resources compatible with your favor. It's a kingdom budget. How many of us understand that a church that's just a church can only have a church budget? But a church that has a kingdom anointing has access to a kingdom budget. That's why God doesn't want you building the kingdom out of a church budget. And you wonder why you're always warring and contending about finances. The Lord says, it's a different budget. There's, diff there's a different pot available, a different account for the kingdom than there is for church. 
I see an abundance in line with the merging of the sun and the bright. I see an upgrade in your identity, an increase in your resourcing. This is what I think it will mean, is that nations will provide for you. Governments will include you in their budget. I see see buildings and property being given to you. I see expense accounts will open. Businesses will include you in their balance sheet. And hundreds of thousands of ordinary people will give to the presence of God in your midst. And I see a great confusion over hell. Because I believe that as we rise up to occupy this new level, we will confound the evil one. Because for centuries, he's been used to working against this. He's been used to working against a domestic cat, and now he's got a lioness by the tail. That's a whole different story. You shall confound the enemy. And I tell you this, your resources shall no longer be your chain. They will become your weapon. And wherever you go, jubilee shall follow in your footsteps. There's an open heaven shall abide with you. And I believe a restoration shall gather in the, in the space, in the clash between two kingdoms. This is a crossroads for a glow. You have permission to go higher. Occupy a higher place of revelation and experience. The Lord is saying, permission has been granted for you to come up higher. And you will discover the intentionality of God in every nation. And you will move into prophetic declaration, this is that. A prophetic anointing that recognizes and releases what God has previously spoken. And your assignment will be to go in with an ancient prophecy or ancient prayers having been prayed in that place. And you will go in and you will say, now is the time. Let us see this fulfilled. Now we call upon the God of promise and the ancient path will open up. There's a huge relationship between you and the ancient ways of God. You go into places that had a history one time with God and now don't. And you're going to recover the words that were spoken back then and the prayers that were prayed back then. And you're going to come and present them to the Lord and say, now surely is the time. And you will see things happen that will be astonishing and they'll definitely get on the news. These are words that have, you understand this, these are words that have lain dormant. Promises not claimed in the nations. You're on a treasure hunt. Go, find, release. Look for the intentions of God. Look for the purposes of God. You know that God never allows confrontation without breakthrough. He never allows a problem without a provision. And He never allows stress without the anointing. Heaven has come to earth already in a glow. What you are discovering in these days is the passion of heaven, the majesty of heaven, and the unlimited power and provision of heaven. I see a new level of prayer opening up. Prayer based on permission granted. Praying with God. Prayer that reminds the Father, Lord, you said, Lord, you said, Lord, you said. Beyond, it's beyond supplication with thanksgiving. We're no longer asking God to come. We're no longer asking God to move in a nation or a place. We are thanking Him that He is here because we are here. Because we have this permission. We have this place in His heart and in His affection. We have an open heaven. 
We're calling up in our prayers the ancient prophecies and promises over a nation, and we're offering them with thanksgiving. And we're not asking God to do something. We say, this is what you have promised. These are the words that you have spoken. Now do all that's on your heart. Now is the time. You brought us here. We are the voice to this nation. And we are saying, you have already spoken. And these are your words. And we give them back to you. Let us see a performance of that which is said. We want to see this is that. We're not looking for new prophecies. We're redistributing the old ones. They're prophetic assignments that birth permission. It's a glow moving in a new intentionality. And we're going to learn how to brood over a nation like the Holy Spirit does. So we're all going to get broody. This is what I sense. You're going to do the same intercession that Jesus is doing. The same intercession that Jesus does. No, honestly, the same intercession that Jesus does. He doesn't stand before the Father saying, please, Father, please, Father, please, Father. He doesn't stand there like that. He doesn't stand in heaven beseeching the Father. It's an ongoing prophetic conversation between the two of them. Father, you said, Father, it's time. Now, Father, now. It's a conversation. Remember that? Lord, let's do that. Father, let's do that. You're going to pray in exactly the same way. You're moving into powerful, confident, prophetic prayer with thanksgiving and prophetic proclamation from the throne. And the Father will give you permission, and He will say to you, ask me for that. And He will be your assignment. He will give you your assignment. You won't be stood there saying, Lord, what are we doing here? What is it you want to do? You'll go. He'll say, go to that place and say this. Go and stand in that place, on that street corner, at that moment in time, and say this. And we'll go with prophetic intentionality, because we'll know the words that God has previously spoken. It's a whole new characteristic of ministry. And when the enemy is present, and he's going to have to be whether he likes it or not, think about that one. Our worship before the throne is going to turn into a prophetic decree against the enemy. So when the enemy shows up, we get to play. We are turning the tables. He has tried for years to show us how powerless we are. We're going to totally convince him how powerless he is. We're going to prophesy His destruction. We're going to prophesy. We're going to say to that town, that city, that region, that nation, the enemy has been judged on your behalf. The, the enemy of this world has been judged on your behalf. And we are here to judge Him, not you. We're here to judge Him and release you. So a, a glow is moving in a greater alignment with the Holy Spirit's intentionality. We're telling the earth, the ruler of this world has been judged. And we are going to bring judgment to the enemy. We are going to crush his head. And that's an ancient promise over women. So it's right back in the garden. That the enemy is going to have to crawl on his belly when a woman is around. And she will crush his head and he will only bruise her heel. And the only reason her heel is bruised is because she's stamped on him so hard she hurts herself.
you will be mapping out new places of breakthrough. Learning to see things from a higher dimension of life in the Spirit. Praying from above. Praying from above. Praying from above. Praying from heaven to earth. New prophetic intelligence. New wisdom. New understanding. A higher experience of the Spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's going to be almost like the satellite images you know, that start out in space and then, you know, you see the whole world and then suddenly it zeroes in on your house in your neighborhood. It's going to be prayers like that. Prayers that arrow in on somebody. You know, when your location changes, so does your anointing. When you are earthbound, we move in travailing prayer. Nothing wrong in that. When we live from heaven to earth, we move in prevailing worship. We get swept away in who God is, caught up in His majesty, taken up by His presence. Jesus, and we see Jesus standing in awe and delight over the Father, worshiping and blessing and saying, let's do this. Father, let's do this. Oh, let's go over there. Let's do that. And let's send a glow here and let's send a glow there. And a conversation in heaven of times past, who shall we send? And there's Isaiah standing there, you know, like you do. (laughs) Listening into a conversation in heaven. That's the best definition of prayer I know. You're listening into a conversation in heaven and you get to join in. Praying with God, not towards Him. We get the pleasure of reminding the Father, it's time. It's time. And He will say to us, go to that country. Stand in that place. Speak out to me the prophecy that has been spoken over it. And say these words to me, Papa, it's time. It's time. It's time for a community to live from heaven to earth. It's time for us to live above something and not beneath it. And you will encounter the economics of heaven. Only God has a budget. Only God has abundance. The enemy has a budget. You can discover what that really means. We're going to have more money than that fool. When we, live, when we live from earth to heaven, we get our needs met. When we live from heaven to earth, we get our inheritance. There is a prophetic declaration coming into our midst. In fact, we're going to be full of declarations. It's going to change the way we pray, change the way we position ourselves before the Father. Imagine it, 172 countries at war with the devil. Imagine it. Can you imagine, can you imagine how that is going to stretch his resources? Soon, every nation will be against him. And he will have to decide where to fight. And he's going to give some territory away in some places in order to concentrate his focus on others. But we're going to follow him to those places and fight him there. It's time to dominate. It's time to lead the enemy astray. It's time to blind him with the radiance of Christ. Time to confuse him with your favor. A glow has come of age. You are trusted by the Father, and God is speaking things out over you. We need ears to hear what the Father is saying. He's saying this, you are my beloved, and the earth must listen to you. Therefore, raise your voice. Let your voice be heard in the earth. Predominant prayer with thanks will overcome. 
I want to say one sobering word in closing. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, I don't want this to erase your joy. I want it to take your joy to a new level. There are consequences here. Because you are no longer earthbound, but living from heaven to earth, your relationships in the church at large will come under strain. You are in direct confrontation to the enemy because you're standing under an open heaven. Churches that are familiar with being intimidated by the enemy will now become intimidated by you. Hey, listen, mediocrity has no wisdom and no discernment. And your level of anointing will expose the lack in the church community. You know, when the light shines, the shadows are revealed. And the church is a shadow of who God really is. But some churches will adjust upwards. Other churches will just simply move sideways. Your kingdom anointing cannot be owned by the church. It can't be packaged. So I want to say this to you. This means that you are no longer subject to the world of men who are living from the wrong place. You're no longer accountable to a religious system or a church that's not living in the light of fullness. That would be like a lion being accountable to a meerkat. So the Father over the last few years has been giving you and will continue to give you new relationships, an apostolic and a prophetic presence in your midst, a strategic apostolic counsel that gives prophetic counsel to you. And you will establish the kingdom wherever you go. And you will help to birth new prototype prophetic churches in the earth. This is a new day. And the Father has waited for this day for so long. You've come of age, beloved, and He trusts you. And so He's going to promote you, just like He promoted Joseph. just like he promoted Joseph from the prison to being prime minister. This is a promotion from heaven, a lifting up, a rising up. And it will percolate down all through the conduits that you have in your relationships. Every region, every group is going to come under something. That's why we're at a crossroads. Because His plans for you, I believe, are majestic. And the only way you can live in these days is to be astonished and amazed and have a sense of wonder about life and God and who you are and what you're doing and where you're going. And many times you're going to be sat there think, shaking your head and thinking, we do not have a plan for this. This is not part of our vision. <laughs> we don't have a strategy for this. How do you even spell this? <laughs> and yet it's working. But the thing that God loves about you is your hands off. You've learned to be led by the Spirit. That's what He trusts about you most. That and your faithfulness. That and your prevailing, persevering spirit that has so blessed him for 40 years. This is your time. This is your promotion. This is the year of your rising. This is when God begins to lift you into a whole different dimension. And he will, you will have to learn how to think from a renewed mind. 
You're going to be renewed in the spirit of your thinking. Because everything that you know how to do is not going to work for much longer in this new place. <laughs> it's going to be fun watching you struggle. <laughs> the thing you need to capture here is a, set, a real strong sense of the Father's pleasure and the Father's love and the Father's passion and the Father's sheer delight and joy in you. And yeah, you'll struggle to learn. Ach, you know, who doesn't? But it's a good struggle, and you should laugh about it. And I think you'll find yourself laughing way more than ever before, because this is a good time. This is a good struggle. This, all you're faced with is the struggle to be astonishing. That's the struggle, is to become as brilliant as God. And you'll make mistakes for sure. But the Father will just grin at you and say, let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. Yeah? You're trusted. That's the main thing. You're trusted. And so this is a good journey. It's a great place to be in the deep affections of God. All you can do is just relax. You're trusted. I say it all the time, Father, I really screwed that one up. And all I get is a laugh, yeah. But hey, I'll give you another chance. So what did you learn from that, son? Well, I learned not to be like that. Well, that's good. So I'll give you another shot at it. How many more shots are you going to give me? Well, let's get to 100 and we'll talk again. Right? He just wants you to love the learning. We have some things to unlearn now, and that's as much fun as learning. But he wants you to love the learning. You have favor. You can't lose it. You have His permission. It's been granted. You have His blessing. You have His approval. You have His trust. You have permission. It's an open heaven. Come up higher and check yourself out. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, that these need to be extraordinary days. Because <clears throat> you don't do ordinary anymore. These are outrageous times. Because the times require outrageous behavior. These are enormous times that require big people. People to rise up into a big place. These are astonishing times because your glory is returning to the earth. And these are days of great joy and delight because joy is the currency of heaven. And when you live under an open heaven, well, you just have to be happy about that. These are happy times for us, Father. New struggles, that'll be fun. New things to learn, Yahoo. New things to see, great. New experiences, and above all, a totally different, brand new, brilliant relationship with you. Can't wait. May it be unto us, Lord, according to your word. For Jesus' sake, because he deserves it, especially. Amen. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. <laughs>